Hello and welcome to day two here in Wales for the latest rounds of the Motorsport UK British Rallycross Championship Five Nations Trophy presented by Cooper Tyres. And we're all set for another fantastic day of action here in Pembrey. Donnelly great from Upton as well, they go side by side, Donnelly gets the lead into the first corner and Toehill's down into third place, nearly fourth position because Thomas is now on his inside there, so it's Donnelly from Upton now from Thomas. Derek Toehill now sits in second place, Roger Thomas goes joker, I think there might have been contact between Upton and Thomas because it looks like some bodywork is missing, yeah you can see the front bumper, the front uh, bonnet I should say, missing from the number 95's car and he's got a puncher on the front left there as well, so that's not ideal at all there for Roger Thomas, so his day weekend even goes from bad to worse and somehow he's able to keep that number 95 on the straight and narrow despite only having three wheels on his wagon he's miles in front lovely decisive driving there from Julian Godfrey able to increase that advantage and is now in the lead of the race having jokers and has now got a comfortable advantage there so good stuff from Julian Godfrey exactly what the six-time champion needed to do to assert his authority on the supercars here for round three of the Five Nations British Rallycross Championship. So Steve Hill, the elder statesman, 71 years of age he is in that Mitsubishi Evo 10. It's an older car now, as is, of course, the Citroen C4 that's out in front in this race, but it's certainly not lacking in pace in any way, shape or form. Final for the Junior Rallycross Championship is underway here at Pembrey, then down towards the first corner, Langmaid, Robbins and Scott, oh look at that, aggressive up the inside as they come through the first series of corners. Corey Padgett coming under pressure then from the uh, 110, oh that's what Max Watt spins it round at the bottom of Brooklyn, drops right to the back of the field so that aggressive start comes to nothing sadly. Meanwhile Max Watt getting it very sideways on the gravel and he's going to lose out to Laura Vittles there as well so it's been a very difficult race for Max Watt following that incident early doors and he loses out to Vittles who herself runs wide coming through the hairpin bend gets it back on the straight and narrow well goodness me this is a frantic junior final and Caitlin May spun as well from the podium Caitlin May's now lost out to Finley Scott by the looks of things the number 15 Max Langmaid over the line to take the win in the final for the junior rallycross class here in Pembrey, the final for the Super Nationals is underway. Good start from Bellamy, great start from Bollock on the outside. Pleasdale left standing and down into third place by the first corner. So it's Bellamy from Bollock, from Pleasdale, from Lee Keeler as they come through the second turn there. So not a good start from Pleasdale as he led the way. He goes joker first lap, decides to cut his losses early. But now that gives a clear track in front for Paige Bellamy on the gravel section in the Titan Twisty. Could be an opportunity. Here comes Pleasdale up the inside. He takes out one of the bollards there, but does doesn't get ahead of Bollock crucially there as well. So Bollock defending and making that BMW as wide as possible, but he goes wide himself at the hairpin, but he's got the traction and the power to be able to overhaul and outpace that VX220 down the back straight. One designed for lightness and agility, the other designed for straight line speed. And you can see that straight line speed not proving to be a dividend here for them. Contact between Bleasdale and Bollock into the first turn. Up the inside comes Bleasdale for second. Great driving there from Bleasdale, it was aggressive, it was forceful, and it was brilliant. He's through into P2 then. Bollock was a bit more robust than you might have thought, but Bellamy comes over the line to win the Super National Final for round four. Ring light on and go. Good start from Constantine, great from Weatherly. Look at Chisman in the yellow machine trying to come up from the second row of the grid. Three into one to the first corner. It's going to be Luke Constantine that leads the way from uh, James Constantine then in second position. Then it's Max Weatherly into third place. James Chisman into P4. And looks like uh, Anto Pickenden there was able to get away pretty nicely. What can we say about Luke Constantine? Well, he has led commandingly over the course of round four. And he comes across the line to win the final for the Suzuki Swift in Pembrey. Over the tunnel line he co comes. James Constantine finishes second. Max Weatherly third. James Chisman in fourth position. Anto Pickenden will take fifth place. And David Watts will finish two laps down on the rest of the field. But does take the chequered flag in sixth position, crucially there as well, and get some good championship points. Green light and go, good start from Brown, great start from Abby McGinnis off the front row, Ben Sayer in the middle there, they all get away very equally, Sayer slots into second, see Brown into the lead, looks like the number 64 of uh, Abbott comes through into 
P4 uh, then as they come through into the first series of corners. Dave Ellis in amongst the mix there in the background as well. Brown continues on, as does Abby McGuinness. So Steve Brown it is with the advantage over Ben Turner from Tom Constantine, now in third position in the yellow machine. Where's he going to emerge in relation to Ben Turner? He's got a comfortable advantage, or does he? No, Bradley Turner is now in second place and really close up onto the back of him. So coming through the left, then the right, then the left again. And Brad Turner is really putting the pressure onto the back of Steve Brown then. They're coming towards the timing line and Brown wins the final in the BMW Minis from Bradley Turner, from Ben Sayer. Dave Ellis comes home P4, Darren Bleasdale P5, Abby McGuinness in sixth place, Andy Hawks in seventh. Barry Scott gets away well, as does Alan Tapscott in the Mark II Ford Escort. Ray Morgan goes side by side with Barry Stewart down to the first corner. Side by side with Tapscott versus Bristow. Contact there for Tapscott into the back of Ray Morgan, into the side of Vince Bristow. And somehow the red Escort emerges from that contact in third position as well. Can he hold on to that race lead or will the 114 of Ray Morgan be able to find his way past? He certainly will on the exit of the corner. Ray Morgan in the Ford Escort is now ahead and into the race lead in the final. Brilliant driving then from Ray Morgan. So is Barry Stewart going to do anything? No, he's not. He's made a mistake into the bottom of the circuit and he's lost a position now to Alan Tapscott there as well. And Vince Bristow's fancying a slice of the action. Bristow round the outside and just three corners from home separating Ray Morgan from an emphatic first win in the final of 2021. Ray Morgan over the line to win the Super Retro class here for round four of the Five Nations British Rallycross Championship in Pembrey. Green lights and go. Good start from Cousins. Great start from Tony Lynch off the second row. He's going to get the whole shot and the lead down to the first corner. What a start there from Tony Lynch. Here comes Cousins once again on Tony Lynch down the outside. He's late on the brakes. He's deep into the corner. Can he get the overspeed? Can he get the traction? Cousins versus Lynch side by side. And he just has to back out of it there, does Tony Lynch. Uh, sorry, does Steve Cousins rather. Come through the s bends and that is all she wrote there for Steve Cousins. Tony Lynch in the MR2 wins the final of the retro class here in Pembrey ahead of Steve Cousins. Green lights and go. Good start from O'Donovan. Not a bad launch at all though from the man in second position of Tommy Caldwell. He gets the advantage and gets the lead into the first turn. So it's Caldwell from O'Donovan then from Billy Alexander by the looks of things. He's made some good ground there. And now sensibly O'Donovan goes joker. He wants to get out of the traffic, wants to try and get the undercut on Caldwell. And he knows that he has got the pace on the number 49 crucially here as well. O'Donovan has closed that gap down. He's really getting his elbow down, but he has a spin on the gravel. O'Donovan spins it then. So from battling for the lead, he now loses second place. Over the line comes Tommy Caldwell. He wins the final then in the RX150 category. Absolutely phenomenal scene. Green light and go. Good start from the front row then for David Bell. He gets the advantage over Martin Hawks down to the first corner there side by side. Bell on the inside for the next part of the turn. He's got the inside line. Adrian Turner also picks the pocket of Martin Hawks there as well. So from first to third, over the timing line they go. Starting the third lap, these three drivers running nose to tail for one another. David Bell still continues on as he leads the way, or did lead the way, before he jokers then. Where's he going to emerge? It's just ahead of the number 35 of Martin Hawks. That allows Adrian Turner to take over the lead of the race. But Turner, of course, still owes that joker lap. Going joker then is the number three of Adrian Turner. That allows David Bell to come out into the race lead. Very close for second position, though. And Martin Hawks has just got the overcut. David Bell over the line and taking the win in the all four minutes class in the final here ahead of Martin Hawks ahead of Adrian Turner and Craig Lomax just gets the better of Darren Scott to the line in the Super 1600 category. Ready to race board is on the final for round three. Lights out and we go racing. Great start from Hill on the outside. Good from Godfrey. Look at O'Donovan coming through on the inside. Contact as well. Up and into the back of Vittles. Oh my goodness me. What drama on the first corner. It is going to be Godfrey that leads the way then from Hill. From O'Donovan. From Vittles then. And going joker is Derek Tohill on the first lap. That's crucial for Tohill. He wants to get himself out of the drama and out of the traffic. Steve Hill getting very sideways ways on the gravel section and Godfrey has a clear track in front of him there then. I think that incident was all started by Tristan Ovenden who just was a bit late on the brakes into the first corner. Here comes O'Donovan on the outside then of Hill into the hairpin then. On the inside comes O'Donovan. Can the number two make it through? Not quite. Vissels comes through on O'Donovan now. 
brilliant driving from the Latvian. Well, this is absolutely fantastic, but nothing can be taken away from Julian Godfrey. We're already on lap three of this final, and he is leading the way and has led the way commandingly all weekend behind the wheel of that Ford Fiesta. It might be an older car, but it has not been slow at all. O'Donovan goes joker then, as does Roger Thomas from behind. Where does O'Donovan emerge? It's side by side with Amund, and then into the gravel section we go, and O'Donovan gets ahead. Here comes So Hill on the inside. Can he make it through? Not quite through there, but there's contact between them. This is absolutely amazing racing. O'Donovan looks like he's going to inherit third place. He is going to hold on to third position after his joker, after it's all played out here. But into the final series of corners we go. And across the line, Julian Godfrey wins the final of round three of the Five Nations British Rallycross Championship.